Size does not matter since location is king. These are the words of Paolo Alcazarin in his 2006 article on Philstar describing pocket park development. In the previous episode, we identified three advantages of pocket green parks. First, they reduce the friction of distance. Second, they increase the frequency of exposure to greens. And third, they are quick win solutions because of less red tape. In this episode, we will outline three primary steps barangays can take to start developing pocket green parks. Pocket green parks are small-scale, urban, open, and green spaces, measuring no more than 0.10 hectares in size. Here in our barangay, we have a pocket park that also serves as a waiting area for Grab, Lala Move, and Food Panda riders. This pocket park is also a good waiting area for commuters who need to ride the jeepney. Imagine walking outside your house for less than 5 minutes and reaching greenery. So how can your barangay start developing pocket green parts? First, conduct greening on the buffers of existing government facilities social gathering areas, and streets. Existing government facilities like barangay halls, public schools, and health care centers should be green. One challenge of pocket park development cited by the pocket park toolkit is community distrust. Communities are not all in on pocket park development. Setting an example on greening government structures can incentivize and encourage community involvement as well. The parking spaces of government facilities are also primary candidates for pocket green parks. Expensive plant boxes are not necessary. Plant some trees and you will also provide shade for parked cars. The easements of places of worship should also be accessible green spaces. The barangay can enjoin leaders of these worship groups in maintaining plants, trees, and flowers outside their places of worship. Step number two, enjoin residents in greening projects, especially in using idle lands. The pandemic has shown how people love greenery in their homes, in their office desks, the barangay government can persuade owners of idle lots to convert these into public green spaces by offering rental or concession fees. Then, put the plantitos and plantitas on force. I am sure if you give them the space, green thumbs will do their work. Moreover, this strategy will encourage community involvement and social cohesion. This can be a barangay activity. Another challenge raised for pocket green park development is diminishing park use. Community involvement invites community use of these pocket green parks. Again, we are outlining three primary steps that barangays can take to start developing pocket green parks. Step 1 is to conduct greening on existing government facilities, social gathering areas, and streets. Step 2 is to enjoin residents for greening projects and in using idle lands. Step 3 is for barangays use funding wisely and coordinate for shared parks. One of the biggest challenges of any government project is fundraising. Shifting from basketball courts to urban gardens can be a great start. With urban gardens, solid waste management programs can also be supported. With 50% of the waste generation of Filipinos being compostable waste, the solid waste management program of the barangay can also be supported by the development of pocket green parks. 
I have nothing against basketball courts. It's just that urban gardens have its co-benefits. Also, packet green parks can cater more age groups. For barangays in heavily dense cities like the city of Manila, shared green parks among barangays can be a solution. Opportunities for outdoor business activities like alfresco dining connected with pocket green park development can be a funding strategy. As the saying goes, good things come in small packages. Barangays can take advantage of this quick win strategy. Pocket green parks can be the start of green space development in your neighborhood. Start greening, start involving, and start shifting your fundraising priorities. Size does not matter since location is king. What do you think of this episode? Send me a message at emptino.com. Also, follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Spotify.